بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters in Islam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your time that we're going to spend together inshaAllah talking about the best of the best in this series again we talked about the Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'een and we talked about who the Sahaba were in the first episode the second episode we talked about Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu wardah but today, inshallah, we're going to talk about a man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him certain things that you will see, wallahi, today. And hopefully we can learn from him so we can follow him and be resurrected with him, inshallah, with Prophet Muhammad sallam in Jannah. So we're listening with our hearts to learn about the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. We're talking about a man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him gifts. That Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said certain things as you will see and hear today, inshallah. You would wish that you would just live a minute like that man, the giant. The man that was known to be fighting for, fearsome. The man that was known that is da'wah mustajaba an answered prayer from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The man that was known to have two black lines from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. The man that was known to men have feared him. The man that is known to have that length of the strength of a hamma, this body, that his feet would be touching the ground if he, if he rides on a horse. A man that was known from his wara, from his leaving this dunya, that he used not to eat anything unless a human being or around him ate. The man was known that he was tested, the man that was known he had conquest, the man that was known for his wara, the man who is a fearing Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula, the man was known for his humbleness, the man who is known for his justice, the man who is known for so many things, but we have very little time to share with you. Starting insha'Allah and hoping that you would understand that this man, Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula, supported him in so many ways through the verses in the Qur'an to support the opinion of that righteous Sahabi. Is the wings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We talked about Abu Bakr. And who is the second wing of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu wa anhu sahabati ajma'in. Ameen. When we talk about Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu ardah, he says that there is nothing on the face of the earth after Abu Bakr Siddiq. We know that he's the best that walked on the face of the earth after prophets and messengers. But women have not given birth to anyone like this, like Umar al-Khattab radiallahu Nothing that history will testify that he has established what he established. Nothing that we will know that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned so many things in his honor. It is sufficient to know that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wallahi ya Umar, by Allah, O Umar, if the shaitan sees you going on one path, one side of the street, he will take the other side of the street. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. Allahu Akbar, ya ukhti. Did you hear this? Shaitan runs away from Umar. Shaitan fears Umar. The one that we're afraid of, where the whispers and the whims and desires, and we're so weak, we humble ourselves and we go to, yes, master, yes, master. Yes, shaitan, we're yours, man. Your, where, your body, you're, you're there. You're there, my brother. You say, you do, and I say, yes, master. Whatever you say, because I want to have a good time. That same shaitan, that same shaitan, used to fear Umar radiallahu anhu arda. You know why the scholar says this? When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, Wallahi ya Umar, if shaitan sees you on one side of the road, he will take the other side of the road. You know why? Some of the interpretations of the scholars, it says because shaitan comes to Umar, tells him to do something that is bad, Umar ibn Khattab recognizes that this is, comes from shaitan. He makes tighfar and he does the exact opposite. He says, A'udhu billah from shaitan rajim I seek refuge in Allah from Satan. They reject it. He says, Astaghfirullah. And he does the opposite. If he's telling him to do something that's wrong, he does something that is good. If he's telling him something that is haram, he does something that is halal. Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. Umar ibn Khattab, ya ahbab. Umar ibn Khattab, radiyallahu anhu wardah. How staunch of an enemy he was before Islam. And the stories are endless, and we know that. How Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu arda, he used to actually, uh, uh, you know, harm the, the slaves of the Muslims and those who were, used to be, even he used to actually go uh, slash the slaves that were not even belonged to him. He would he hated Islam that much. And, subhanallah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned the hearts. Allahu Akbar. 
So before Islam, Umar al-Khattab was a staunch enemy to Islam. And he, as a matter of fact, this story comes in when a man came to Prophet or to Umar al-Khattab and he says, uh, because not too many men would have the audacity to ask Umar certain things because he used to fear him. But you will see that he was humble enough to listen to women, even children. Subhanallah. But one man, finally, he asked him because people didn't want to ask him because he says, sometimes we see you cry with no one around you and then we see you smile or laugh when no one is around you right after that because no one wanted to ask Umar al-Khattab they left him alone so apparently that man came outside of Medina or so one interpretation Wallahu alam. he asked him that question we see you cry on your own then we see you laugh on your own no one is around you and apparently absolutely no reason whatsoever you're crying and then you're laughing you know why so he says, uh, I remember before Islam when I had a daughter, a beautiful daughter, and I was ashamed when she was born, and I was patient, patient, patient. What do I do? Like the Quran says, Adusuhu. Yeah. Do I hide him from people? Adusuhu fi Or do I, uh, do I uh, uh, bury it in, uh, in the dust? So it took me a while and I finally made the, 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 the determination that's it. I'm going to get rid of my daughter. The shame. You see, before Islam, ya akhi, that's one of the reasons Islam brings honor to women. Before Islam, they didn't inherit, they, didn't, didn't, they had no right to vote, no right to actually, for that matter, very difficult for them to make it through, to live. One of the indications says, when it says Islam honors women is that verse that I will be saying, inshallah, after the story. So Umar Khattab took his daughter with him to a place where no one see him in the, in the desert. And now he's digging a hole. And as an obedient, uh, righteous daughter that she was, may Allah have mercy on her soul, she helped him, helped her father to dig, not knowing that she's digging her own grave. And then Umar, he took her and put her in that place. And now she, he's uh, covering her with the, with, with, with the dust. Before that, the dust came into that beard of Umar. And she used to clean the dust of her father. Allahu Akbar. Till Umar buried her and she's holding on to his finger. He says, till she couldn't hold on anymore. That's when Umar radiallahu anhu arda used to cry. And he then said, and the reason I used to laugh, is sometimes I would go away and I want to have an ilah to worship, a god, uh, a sculpture to worship, and I wouldn't have any. So once I had some dates and no other uh, material to make an ilah, a god, with a small g, of course, for me to worship. So I made this god out of dates. And uh, after I worshipped, you know, this uh, false god, of course, I got hungry. Then I was looking around, there's no food. Then I looked at this ilah. Hmm, hasha, inshallah. Then I says, wow, that looks good. So he ate his God. <laughs> so he's, with a small g, not Allah, hasha, inshallah. We understand. This is the statues before Islam that they used to worship. So he says, I would smile after I remember what happened, what I used to do. So a man asked him, he says, lakum Didn't you have any brain? He said, Wallahi, the aqul were there, the brain, the minds were there, but the hidayah was not there. Subhanallah. But see, you can understand now, you can understand that Umar al-Khattab was like that, but never despair of Allah's mercy, akhi and ukhti. So one, one of the lessons of, we're going to learn is never despair of Allah's mercy. No matter how bad you were, no matter how far out you were, you can always come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, ask for repentance and forgive, and among the four conditions or three conditions, and come back, Allah will exchange your bad deeds into good deeds, inshallah. It's not our topic. We we'll talked about it in another session before. Now, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda. We know that when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there, he spoke the language of Umar when he came to kill Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when he, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took him, Gab al-Shulghism says, an tuslim ya ibn al-Khattab? Isn't it time for you to become a Muslim? Or Umar is ana ya Rasulallah. It is time, O Messenger of Allah. But when Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda became a Muslim, what happened, akhi and ukhti? Did he say, uh, you know, after so many so, I'll learn and I will after
after I can do an after no right away as soon as he says ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadur rasulullah he says ya rasulullah alayhi salam are we not on a haq are we not on the truth he says on true path of course he says yes alaysu ala batil they do do they not follow the falsehood he says yes he says let's go <laughs> right away no time wasted let's start da'wah let's declare this fear none من يا أخي عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه وارضاه he says ما زلنا عزة منذ إسلام عمر we are in glory we are in dignity we're dignified we have pride after عون الخطاب رضي الله عنه وارضاه ذيك يا مسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أخي يا أختي so you can understand who عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه وارضاه he made a du'a to Allah سبحانه وتعالى so اللهم عز الإسلام بأحد العمرين oh Allah reward or glorify Islam with one of the two Umars, Amr ibn Hisham, we're not going to talk about, this is an Abel Hakam and so on, or uh, which is, you know, about Jahl, uh, or Umar al Khattab, because both of them were among the honor of society, and Prophet thought that would, would help the, the da'wah and Islam and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Umar. Did you hear that, Akhi al Ukhti? Who chose Umar? Allah subhanahu jalla fi ula chose Umar for Islam. Allahu Akbar. It is sufficient, wallahi, for that that is Prophet Muhammad sallam made a dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered the dua and he chose the best of two and he chose to, to uh, glorify Islam with Umar. Radiallahu anhu wa So you can understand now how Umar was before. And he used to say, Nahnu kunna adilla. We were a nation of people being what? Dishonored. Before Islam, فَأَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us and dignified us and glorified with Islam. مَنِ ابْتَغَ الْعِزَّ فِي غَيْرِ إِسْلَامِ أَذَلَّهُ اللَّهُ And anyone that seeks izzah, glory or dignity or pride or whatever it is, anywhere else other than Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate them. So you can understand where Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda took place. You know, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda when he took the the, uh, became Amir al-Mu'mineen and by the way he is the first one to be called Amir al-Mu'mineen among the Khulafa you know he was called aren't we believers? he says yes aren't you Amir? he says yes he says okay then anta Amir al-Mu'mineen then you are Amir al-Mu'mineen he was called Amir al-Mu'mineen he was known for that he is the first Khalif, Khalifa or successor after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to be dubbed Amir al-Mu'mineen but when he took the Khilafah and remember Umar al-Khattab radiallahu was talked to with Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu on his deathbed and he told him Ya Umar why do you think Allah subhanahu jalla fi ulah puts the ayat al-Rahmah ma'a ayat al-Adhab why does he place uh, the verse of mercy next to the verse of of punishment he says, لِيَكُونَ الْعَبْدَ رَاغِبًا رَاهِبًا For the human being to be hopeful in the mercy of Allah and fearful of the punishment of Allah. And he says, Ya Umar, if you put that upon a son, if death, you know, if you taqi Allah, look after the new Islam, look, look after, be the best, and, and so on, nothing comes to you better than death. And if you don't, nothing worse comes to you more than death. This is Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu arda, when you took the khilafa, radiallahu anhu, he says, I heard when, when people talk to Abu Bakr Siddiq, he says, uh, you know, you want to nominate or uh, appoint Umar al Khattab? He says, he was hard, he was tough on us when you were Amir al Mu'mineen. How is it then? Well, Amrullah, how is he going to be? How is he going to deal with us? And he is the one in charge. He's in command. You were in charge and he was tough on us. How is it going to be? How is he going to be when he is the Amir al Mu'mineen? He says, أَتُخَوَّفُ Do you think you, you're making me fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, by this? He says, Wallahi, Allah mentioned this in his honor. Prophet ﷺ said that about him. Then, then of course, uh, you know, the story, a man came to Abu Bakr Siddiq and he, uh, he was asking for a piece of land. Uh, so Umar al-Khattab says, no. Abu Bakr Siddiq was right next to him and he man is coming to talk to Amir al <laughs> Abu Bakr Siddiq. Then Umar al-Khattab, he cut him off and he says, no, you won't get it. So the man wanted to add fuel to the fire and he wanted to put some uh, rift between Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar al-Khattab So he says, he looks at him, he says, أَأَنْتَ أَمِيرِ مُمْنِينَ أَبْ هُوَ He was talking to Abu Bakr Siddiq, trying to do what? Yes, add fuel to the fire. So he was saying, this, who, are, who is Amir al-Mu'mineen? He was talking to Abu Bakr, you or him? So you know what Abu Bakr Siddiq said? He said that, هُوَ إِنْشَاءَ Yes, Salam. Beautiful. 
He says, him, if he wishes. Put the fire out. Not, not shaitan comes in. Yes, of course. What do you do? What do you think you're doing? And all that stuff. La wallahi. Look at the beauty, the beauty of the relationship between the Sahaba. So now Umar al-Khattab is coming in. He says, I heard. I heard that you were afraid that I will be Amir al because I will be tough on you. He says, Ala innaha ud'ifat. Ud'ifat ay tada'afat. Not weakened. Ud'ifat mean both, but it's in this point. He says, now it's doubled. Wallahi. I have you to, I, uh, you are, to me, you are weak if you're oppressive till I get the rights from you. And I, he says, and everyone amongst you is weak till I get the rights from them. And the one that's being oppressed is strong in my sight till I get his rights from you. And he says, and if you make a mistake, I will put your cheek on the ground. I will put my foot on your face till I get the rights from you. And if I make a mistake, I will place my cheek on the ground. And you put your foot on my face till you get your right from me. Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. Allahu Akbar. Who amongst us nowadays can claim that there's a emir or a king or a prince or a, or a president or a prime minister or whatever it is that they want to call themselves nowadays can claim that, can actually say that I will do that. Allahu musta'an. Uh, we're not going to go into politics, but you understand. But you understand. And that's the same reason that Ali ibn Abi Talib is narrated to somebody else. When the man came to see, who is this Umar? Who is this Umar that you're talking about? That men, that kings in, in Persia and Rome fear Umar from thousands of miles away, and Umar hasn't even gone for them yet. They're just afraid of Umar. So he comes in to see who's this man. He's expecting to do what? To see a castle, to see some guards, to see some army, to see some private this, and uh, pri <laughs> investigators, and to cover that, and... Uh, uh, fortified citadels and barbed wires and zappers and helicopters and no-fly zone. Allah help us, Wallahi. Allah help us. He said, Umar al-Khattab, sleeping under a tree, man. Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, sleeping under a tree. No guards, nothing. So that man shows him, he says, there is Umar. He says, this is Umar? He says, that's Umar. Because, Wallahi, I haven't seen. This is a man that the kings of Persia and Rome fear. Yes. So it was said, he says, Hakamta fa'adilta fastarahta fanimta. He says, you, uh, you were reigning over us as our emir, and you were just in dealing with us. So you had a peace of mind, so you went to sleep. Same Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu he was truthful when he was on the pulpit. The member once he was given a khutbah, he says, ala rislukum, ala rislukum, as you are, stay where you are. And he says, I have uh, lost my wudu. So Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu arda, and wa al bayt ajma'in, he says, Wallahi ma ara annaka fadahta nafsak illa annaka fadahta nafsak ya amir al-mu'mineen. You only expose yourself, O amir al-mu'mineen. He says, faduh al-dunya khayrun min faduh al-akhirah. He says, the scandal, this uh, this, you know, uh, me, people know that I've done this. In this dunya, it's better than they know it in the hereafter. Wala, wala, ya akhi. Allahu Akbar. Now, when we go through the stories of Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu wa ta, he's the one, he's the one that says, the owner of the one that says, لا خير فيكم إلا إذا قلتموها ولا خير فينا إلا إذا سمعناها. There's no good in you unless you tell us what's right. Set us straight. And no good in us, to do what? To accept it and listen to it. Yeah, you try to tell uh, somebody, uh, hey man, <laughs> what are you doing? And to, to walk the talk, when he used to give that, uh, to, 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 to spread the wealth of the booty, the wars and spoils of war and so on, he gave, uh, the story is that he was given a khutbah and a man stood up, he says, we'll not listen to you, nor no sam'an wa ta'an. Or obey you unless you tell me where did you get this big thobe because he was a tall man as we mentioned. Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda. Where did you get this thobe from? Because you give every one of us this small uh, piece and that small piece will not be able to cover your body if that's the case. How did you get it? It says, Aina Abdullah. Who is Abdullah? His son radiallahu anhu ma. Come. Tell this man where I got this. He says, I gave my share to my father. He says, now, now we listen and obey. He says, Alhamdulillah, 
Alhamdulillah, praise you to Allah that he made people amongst the people that I look after like this man that would set me straight and stop me if I'm doing something wrong and call my bluff. Ya salam. Umar al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu arda. Now, a woman comes up to Umar al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. Stops him. He's a busy man. And people around him, he's seen this woman stop him. He says, Ahdi bika ya Umar, mundu kunta tu samma Umayra. Yutlak alayk. I knew you, Umar, from the time you used to call Umayra. Umayran. Meaning what? A small Umar. Then you grew up and you became Umaran. You became Umar. Young man. And now, yutlak alayk, aw tud'a, ya Amir al Mu'mineen. And now you called Amir al Mu'mineen. He says, Ittaqillah fina ya Umar. She says, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dealing with us. And, and, and she started to give him advice. And she was difficult, it was harsh, it was not like diplomatically correct. She was telling him exactly what, what, what we should be telling our Allah Mustaan. Anyway, so now the people said, who is this woman that uh, she's very tough on you? And why did you listen to her? He says, wallahi, if she made me stay right here till judgment day, I would have stayed. You know who this is? It's Khwailat. Khawla bint Hakim. Radiallahu anhu 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 She's the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened to her from Falq Sarazamat. Qad sami'a Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened to her. Sami'a. This is the surah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened to her from Falq Sarazamat, from the seventh heaven, don't you think I will listen to her? Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. This is the same Umar that we know it is narrated that once he was uh, going to a barber to uh, to uh, for a, a haircut or whatever it may be and uh, and the, and the man the barber was actually uh, he he uh, heard Omar say <clears throat> just clearing his throat he passed out <laughs> he thought that he he cut Omar by mistake and Omar uh, you know so this is Omar man it is also narrated that one time that Omar radiyallahu anhu arda he was uh, going in one way, and, and uh, some of the Sahaba were behind him, and he, all of a sudden, he thought of something that is good for the uh, for Muslims, and he turned around right away, quickly. So people were afraid that Umar would do something to them, <laughs> and some other things uh, happened. Anyway, this is the same Umar that the woman saw him around the corner and she lost her baby. This is Umar ibn Khattab that, that, that I told you, men feared him, as I mentioned, that he was, mashallah, tall, uh, and, and even, you know, white, and I will tell you why I'm telling you this after. Inshallah, and he used to when he rides the horse, his feet would touch the ground. That's I mean, Mashallah, la quta illa billah. And it's narrated. It is narrated that uh, you know, even though the hadith is daif, that he's the one that migrated in uh, in uh, in public. I understand, but I mean, it's not a hukm or whatever. Well, we know that he, he migrated also with with others. So I'm not gonna. But I'm just telling you, he's the one that it is narrated that the, even the hadith is, is daif. But you understand that the fears of Umar, the 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 heiba, this reputation of Umar radiallahu anhu, people even thought that uh, Wallahi la yu'min Umar, hatta yu'min Hamar uh, uh, ibn Khattab. Umar will become a Muslim? Are you kidding? <laughs> he will not become Muslim. Even the the the, the Hamar, the donkey of Al Khattab, will, will become a Muslim. That's how they lost hope in Umar because how much he was hard on Muslims. But you see, that's that's the same Umar that when you said that if you want to be, uh, if you want your wife to be a widow, if you want your son to be an orphan, if you want your mother to lose a son, follow him, I'm here, let's fight. No one, no one. He's the one that when he declared that when he became a Muslim, he's the one come, you know, if you want to, to you heard something, he went to uh, Abu Lahab and he knocked on the door. He says, uh, uh, you want to hear something? I became a Muslim. He says, <laughs> And when people got got on got onto him, he fought them all. And he, when he got too tired, he grabbed one of the, the the notable of society and he placed his fingers in his eyes. I'm not talking, you know, mo and whatever, but I'm just saying, you know, he he had that strength fighting from all day till sunset. He didn't care. Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. Umar al-Khattab, that strong of a man, a young boy, a young boy would walk by, say, Taqillah, ya Umar. He would cry. The narration says, Till the beard were wet, wet from his tears. He had two black lines, two black lines. Not from uh, or whatever, no akhi or makeup. It's from the tears coming down, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A young boy would tell him, Umar. He would fear and cry. Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. Could you imagine, my brothers and sisters? This is no other creation. This is a very special creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Umar subhanallah for his ummah. Now this is the same Umar that he would hear the Quran. 
indeed the punishment of Allah would be bestowed or established, he would pass out. He would faint. And he says that people would go visit him for days, go visit him for days, not knowing what happened to him, the ailment. Understand, Akhi, Umar ibn Khattab, my brothers and sisters, amazing, amazing man. Subhanallah. A woman, it's two narrations. One uh, narration says that uh, he was walking around. He's the first one, by the way, that would go at night to make sure that people are doing good in his, uh, his ummah. He's the same one that it talks about uh, even a, a sheep or a camel, another narration. He says, if, I, if, it, if it goes into a hole and uh, it crumbles or, or walks or, or, or gets hurt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold me accountable. Why did I not pave the road for it, Umar? This is the same man, Allahu Akbar, ya akhi, goes around the ra'iyya, the people that he shepherds. That he looks after, he walks around and you see people uh, uh, lighting a uh, uh, fire. But look at the etiquettes and matters of Umar. He didn't say, he said, Assalamu alaikum ahl al -daw. He didn't say, Assalamu alaikum ahl al -nar. He says, Peace be unto you, the people of, he didn't say people of fire, he says, people of dhaw, light. So what do they see? He says, you know, children crying and a woman, you know, complaining. He says, Why? Why are you complaining? And he was with uh, uh, Salim. His uh, Mawla, he's uh, the, the, one of the people that worked for him. So he says, why? Why? Why are you crying? And he says, uh, uh, may Allah take care of Umar. He says, what happened to Why? Why did he say that? Umar, how could Umar know about you when you're all the way out here? He goes, he says, how come? If Umar is in our, he looks after us, how could he forget us? So he says, what, what do we do? What do we do? He says, you know, we don't have food, we don't have this. So what did he do? He says, wait, wait. So he runs to Bayt al Muslimin. He carries the flowers, the, the, the sugar and everything that comes. He says, Salama says, should I not carry on, on your behalf? He says, hamilni la anni. Make me carry it. Don't carry it on my behalf. Atahmil wizri anni yawm al qiyamah. Will you carry my sin or burden on my behalf on judgment day? Allahu Akbar. So he goes to her running back and he cooks for her personally. Cooks for her personally. And he says, and I, I will do this and spread it. You blow in it. And he waited after he gave the, he cooked for them, fed them, made sure that he's he seen them what? Laugh like he's seen them cry. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Ya Umar. And uh, he says, Become Nashtari Mazlamatik. Another narration says there's a woman that he heard that she's complaining about Umar and, and the same thing. And he says, What do we, how do we buy this Mazlama? This man oppressed you, how do we buy it? He bought it from his own money, 25 dinar, it was narrated. And he says, Now, Ali ibn Abi Talib and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, we're walking by it. And he said, Assalamu alaikum, ya Amir al Mu'mineen. The woman did not know he was Amir al Mu'mineen. So she was startled. He says, Asababtu, I shatamt. I, I, I said something bad about Amir al Mu'mineen. He's right here. He says, La alayki, la alayki, don't worry, don't worry. Are you, are you satisfied now? He says, Listen, write this down. He says, Anna, I'm so and so. I, Umar al Khattab, Amir al Mu'mineen, bought from his own money, Madlamati. I am okay with him, no more oppressive actions and deeds against me, and put this in my kafan, put, put it with me in my grave. We're not asking you to do this, it's not a sunnah, please don't do it. I'm just saying that how, how just Umar, how much he feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, to when I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will say I'm innocent. Subhanallah, ya akhi. And other narration says that he go, he says, come back in the morning, go to Amir al-Mu'mineen and complain to him about this man. Who did she see? She saw Umar, of course. She says, he says, yeah, Wallahi, because before that she says, Wallahi lakunta awla min al-khilafa min Umar. He says, you were, you, you were deserving of the khilafa, of you being Amir al-Mu'mineen, the head of a state of Muslims, then Umar. Now you understand. Allahu Akbar. This is Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu arda, when he used to walk in the streets. What do you think he was wearing, Akhi uh, Those uh, beautiful, you know, jewelry, gold leaves and uh, with this big crown of uh, you know this precious stones and all that stuff with the fan and like you've seen in uh, <laughs> he says he's muraqqa he used to have his thobe his garment used to have uh, pieces of uh, hemmed spots to cover the holes <laughs> Allahu Akbar ya akhi Allahu Akbar ya akhi so how many suits do you have man 
Okay, well, I'm, I'm talking to you, and I'm not talking about presidents and all that stuff because we know there's no no comparison, right? There's no comparison. So if, if you tell me that uh, when Umar al-Khattab used to sleep under a tree, and I've seen it with my own eyes in different countries, when the, a president walks by, they block uh, so many streets away from the street that they're going to pass by, and they have a decoy convoy, right? It's like a racing car, man. And, and you don't know uh, you don't know which one is which. Why? Because they're afraid, right? Because Umar al-Khattab was not afraid. He, as we've talked about before, look at the difference, yeah, Akhi. Umar al-Khattab walked in the streets with his thub, muraqqa, muraqqa, hemmed, pieces, different pieces to to hold his uh, straight, yeah, Akhi. Didn't you remember when he went to get the keys for Jerusalem? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring it back to us safe and sound, inshaAllah. He was he was doing what with his uh, with the cinema, the, 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 the man that he, the, the, the young man was uh, working for him. And he says that we rented rented this camel from this point to that point. So when uh, when uh, the stick went, he didn't want to turn around and go back again, you know, because we said we rented this camel from this point to that point. We didn't rent it back. I can go back. So he comes down and he picks it up. Allah Akbar. So he says we will divide this path on three thirds. You know, I'll ride one third. You ride one third, and we'll leave the camel uh, free one third. So he decided to do this. So the, 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 the he he rode, then he gave the camel a break. Then the the, the young man was uh, his time. So when he came in, it says, "Hey, Abid Mumin, you ride because it's not befitting for me to to uh, to be riding and you're walking, pulling. It's amazing, yani. It's, it's not befitting for Amir Mu'minin. Did you get that yani from the Egyptian side of me? Allah help us, inshallah. Anyway, Allah must me. Allah help us, inshallah. So you understand now? So when he's seen him, he says, this is how it was. We, we knew that he was coming to be walking, riding, he will be his, 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 his servant, and grabbing this, and he says, 70 holes or 17 holes, I can't recall, in his, uh, his thobe. Ya yeah, Allah, Allahu Akbar, Ya Umar, radiyallahu anka wardak, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. Tayyib, Wallahu alam, I was told I'm from his sulala. Allahu alam. May Allah make us follow Istaghfirullah. Wallahi, forgive me. It's not, uh, it's not befitting. I, I ask Allah to forgive me. I didn't mean anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, just so I love him. for so Just to be proud of his salala. May Allah make us from his offsprings. He says that it's not befitting for a man to say, I am from this and I'm from that. My jaddi, my grandfather is this. But the one who says, Ha'anada, here I am. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us sincerity and ikhlas, inshallah, and make us work for his deen and accept from us, inshallah, and walk the path, inshallah, the footsteps of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, so we can meet them in Jannah, inshallah, ameen. So you can understand now, Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, wa ta'ala. There's uh, a lot more to share. Now, when Umar al-Khattab was with Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the first time of the battles, what happens? They had hostages. It's true. They had hostages. SubhanAllah, what happened? Umar al-Khattab, he told Prophet Muhammad وسلم, do what? Kill them. Let me find somebody from my own family, my own tribe. Ya yeah, Allah. And let let everyone Hamza and let everyone find from their own tribe and their own family and kill them, <clears throat> so they will know that we have no mercy, no mercy toward them anymore. So Prophet Muhammad was staunched by by the the how Umar radiallahu anhu felt about this is amazing. I mean, this is not. And Abu Bakr Siddiq said, "No, nafdihim." You know, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu he was soft-hearted. So when uh, Prophet Muhammad sallam took the opinion. Of Abu Bakr Siddiq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses, revealed verses in the honor of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu wa and supported the point of view of Umar. It is not befitting for a, a, a prophet, for hatta yuthkhin fil till you have the, the, the uh, you're established, you're accomplished, you're strong. That you show that, uh, no, you have to show them that we mean business, it's not, there's no, uh, no mercy. This is war. Another, of course, we, we know there's other verses. Even at the time where we're supposed to knock three times, you know, when we enter the the, 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 the places or even the bedroom of our, our parents, it's basically just night time, before Fajr, and when the, 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 the slumber time or the Taqaylula afternoon. Umar al-Khattab was the one that suggested that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported him. Subhanallah, even the hijab, the, the, the hijab for Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, radiyallahu anna ajma'een, 
It is the same thing, Ya Rasulullah, everyone that enters Al Barru al Fajr. Not Ummahat al Mu'mineen should be covered, not everyone that enters, you know, and sees them and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Tumata and Fasaluna and Wara Hijab. This is purified for you for your hearts. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported Umar in that. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Sahihain, Sahih Bukhari a Muslim, he says in, in different narrations, he says they were mulhameen, people in nations before us, they had mulhameen, people that uh, received some kind of uh, inspirations that to do the right thing, that they, they had this, they were inspired to do the right thing. And if it was in my ummah, who would it be? It would be Umar. This hadith is Sahih Bukhari a Muslim. I hear another, another hadith that said Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said in Sahih Bukhari or Muslim. He says, I've, I was given this uh, milk and I drank till I couldn't, that I had the coming out and so on. And he says, What's left? I gave it to Umar. Is what it was? He says, It's ilm, knowledge. And other things, he says about the, what it was, uh, you know, that what I've, I've worn. And uh, said the same thing with that, with Umar. It was, you know, the, 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 the hikmah, the wisdom, the, the, the deen, the deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that. So what he says, he says, that knowing about this deen, it is narrated that he is uh, the most knowledgeable about the Quran, most knowledgeable ahkam. He, he was a very learned man, very learned man, subhanAllah. So in his honor, so so many hadith and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned. Then one day, uh, you know, uh, saw it as if he's seen in, in, in heaven, and he saw uh, a woman, Hur al Ain. It's for whom, whom uh, for who is this? He says for Umar al-Khattab. He says, this is <laughs> mudbira. He says he turned around and ran away. He says, تذكرتُ غيرة عمر. He says, I remember that Umar was a jealous man. So he says, Alayka Agar Ya Rasulullah. Alayka Agar Ya Rasulullah. Do you think I will be uh, uh, jealous of you, O Messenger of Allah? Alayhi salatu wasalam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam once asked Umar al-Khattab when he was walking with him. He was walking with him and he says, uh, Do you love me, Umar? Yes, I love you very much. Look at the beauty of the relationship between uh, Prophet and Umar al-Khattab. He says, You love me more than your wealth? He says, yes, I love you more than my wealth, O Messenger of Allah, alayhi He says, do you love me more than your family? He says, yes, yes, Rasulullah, I love you more than my family. So he says, uh, do you love me more than yourself? He says, no. He says, ba'd, ya Rasulullah. You know, it's not yet, not yet, not yet, Uzzah, ya Umar. not yet, Umar, not yet, Umar. First of all, the scholar says that he, obviously he was telling the truth. Because if he was not telling the truth, he would have also said yes on this one, and he, did, he would. What's the, what's the big difference? So he said, he says you have not completed your faith yet, Umar. So he said, I stopped for a few seconds. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, Ruma, he is narrating. He says that he said he's telling his father that you know I only took a few seconds and I ran up to Prophet Muhammad sallam. He says, I love you more than myself, O, o, o Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa he says, what made you do that, O oh, Dad? He says, I remember Judgment Day where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu were going to intercede for us. So I said, who, will, who do I need more? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or myself? He says, I need Prophet Sallallahu more. So I love him more than myself. Yeah? Okay, so we should, inshallah, take that and heed. Do we love Prophet Sallallahu more than ourselves and more our families, more than this dunya? Yes. All that stuff for the, all the eight things that are halal. You know, your family, your tribe, your children, your wives, your your wealth, your your homes, your businesses, and all that stuff is more preferred to you, is better for you in your sight. But then Allah and His Messenger were jihad in Fisabili, Fatarabbasu. Say the scholar says, Ya Akhi and Ukhti, these things are halal. These things are halal. But if they were more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger in jihad fi sabilillah, fatarabbasu, wait. So could you imagine, you know, Allah is telling you if these things are halal, if it's more beloved to you than Allah and the Messenger in jihad fi sabilillah, could you imagine you doing thing, things that are haram? Allahumma sallam. Imagine, akhi and ukhti. Do as much as you can, akhi and ukhti, inshaAllah. Now, Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu warda, to honor Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when uh, the armies they came and Allah Umar al-Khattab was the one that ruled the most and uh, the one that uh, he had so many futuhat conquests subhanallah opened so many uh, uh, cities for Islam and when all these uh, treasures come back come back to, to Umar 
And he said, even the small stone from a ring that fell and they give it back to you, Umar. He says, because you were fair and just and trustworthy in the ra'iyyah. He says, you were truthful. You were truthful and honest and trustworthy, so your ra'iyyah were the same. But if you weren't, they wouldn't have been. So Baka Umar. And you know who he called? He called... Uh, 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 Subhanallah, I can't remember the, the Sahabi right now. Suraka, Suraka ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He said, Aina Suraka ibn Malik, come. And he gave him Suwayray Kisra. You know what? He made the army split into two. And he makes, uh, he made uh, 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 Suraka ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He says, he wore Suwayray Kisra. And he says, raise your hand. He says, to honor the promise of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the wala, ya akhi. The loyalty to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he promised that uh, uh, Kisra, that uh, Suwayray Kisra, the jewelry of Kisra, would be worn by Suraka ibn Malik when he ran after him. And the stories of uh, the Hijrah. After Prophet Sallam and Umar, he says, it is now, He says, today we will honor, honor the, 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 the commitment of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he made him do, he made him do that. And now you can see that Umar Khattab, radiallahu anhu arda, he says, woe to you. He says, look at these treasures. Look at these treasures. And he was afraid. You know why he's afraid? He says, Ya Rabb. I, I, I recite in your in your book, O oh Allah, that Sanastadrijuhum min haithula yaalamun. Umli lahum says, give them, give them from this worldly life in a gradual way, so to hook them. So I was afraid, O oh Allah, that this is a stidraj, tumli. So I, you give me from this dunya. So I, I don't want to be, O oh Allah, or I don't want to be, O oh Allah. This is the same Umar when there was a maja'ah. There was famine among Muslims at a time where people used to give, and they used to do be very to give the, the Umar Khattab radiallahu anhu. People, a, a caravan came from Egypt, and he, the leader came in and he gave this uh, the food and stuff. He, Umar Khattab radiallahu anhu. What did he do? Did he eat first? He says, uh, you know, me first, so I can after look after the raya. He says he gave everything to the raya. He gave everything from lahm and sam, from uh, you know this uh, the beef. And, uh, uh, and and oil and, and 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 so on. So when the man, the leader of the caravan, was invited to Umar Khattab's home, he says, "Come, you're eating with me today." He says, "Now the man, he thought that he was going to eat something better than the ra'iyya, uh, the the people, uh, the Muslims." So, but he, what did he do? He took uh, uh, crumbles of dried uh, uh, bread, khubz, and oil to dip it in. He says, "Yeah, Amir al-Mu'mineen, why didn't you let me eat with the people?" <laughs> <laughs> he says, why don't you eat like people? He says, I will only eat this beef that you brought and all that stuff when, when I know that every Muslim on the face of the earth has eaten and they're sufficed. Then I will eat. Allah. As a matter of fact, Umar ibn Khattab, I mentioned to you that he used to have a white uh, skin with a reddish tent. It is narrated that it's actually he went gray. People were afraid that Umar Khattab would have died. He was so saddened at the time of the famine. He was so saddened at the time of the famine of Umar Khattab radiallahu anhu arda. This is how much Umar Khattab radiallahu anhu, he cared about Muslims, he cared about it. When he used to open this, uh, the, the, the city, you know what he used to do? He used to stand in a, in a new city, or to establish a new city for Islam. He used to stand in the middle, and he would take an arrow and throw... Arrows right around, right around, 360. He was doing what? He was establishing, establishing the boundaries of the city. Where was he standing, do you think? He was standing right at the center of the city where he was going to establish a masjid. That is correct. Masjid should be in the center of our homes, center of our life, center of our cities. We should re re revolve, our life should be around the masjid, Akhi and Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda. Even though he was given the glad tiding, he was given the glad tiding that he's going to heaven, inshallah, among the ashram mubashara. Yes, How much would you give, Bakhi, to be among the ashram mubashara? Allahu Akbar. May Allah resurrect us with them, inshallah. So Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu arda, when he heard, 
when he heard Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhu an sahabat yajma'een katim sir rasulillah maybe one day we'll talk about him inshallah he's the one that is that the, the, the concealer of the secret of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of what? of hypocrites Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Hudayf ibn al-Yaman about the hypocrites who they were so when they die so they will not pray janazah on them so you know why when people actually uh, when the, one of the people that died in Medina, the Sahaba would look at Hudayf ibn Yaman first. If he stands up to pray Janazah, they will go up and pray Janazah. <laughs> if he doesn't stand up and pray Janazah, no one will pray Janazah because they knew now that he is a Munafiq. Okay, so they will not pray on his on his soul and spirit and the Janazah, inshallah. So Umar al Khattab goes to Prophet to, to Hudayf ibn Yaman and he says, Astahlifuka billah. I ask you in the name of Allah. I take an oath. You have to tell me the truth. I ask you for the sake of Allah. Asamani laka Rasulullah. Wallahi, I don't know what to say. Subhanallah. Did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu name me, meaning Umar, to you, O Hudayfa? Among what? He thinks that I am among the hypocrites. He was afraid that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu secretively told Hudayf ibn al-Yaman that Umar al-Khattab was among the hypocrites but he was so sensitive he didn't want to uh, the hurt the, the, uh, the you know the uh, hurt feelings of Umar al-Khattab so he goes to Hudayf asking him did some did Rasulullah call my name to you so فَبَكَى Hudayfa. Hudayf ibn al-Yaman بَكَى he, he cried because he couldn't believe that Umar al-Khattab he would say such a statement so now when Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu saw Hudayf ibn al-Yaman cry, he also was, he was afraid because he thought that it is true. Hudayf was crying because Prophet Muhammad sallam named Umar al-Khattab to him as among the hypocrites. Hasha, it's not of course, not the case. So he's, he, Hudayf cried, he says, Ya Umar, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Anta, you, you're afraid that you're among the hypocrites. So Wallahi, I heard Prophet Muhammad sallam. He says, there will be fitan, fitan, Tests coming and trials and errors coming down on this ummah. Except there's one bab, one gate, a door that's holding these fitan back. And as soon as that door is, is, is broken, the fitan will come after him. And wa anta ya Umar al bab, you are the bab, you are the gate that's holding these fitan back. You, could you imagine anyone that had the audacity to, to come up with the, the to, to, to come up with fitna and all that stuff? Umar will take him away right away. I knew this, I will take it. He, people didn't dare to break the law at the time of Umar al-Khattab. Umar al-Khattab established what is right, Akhi and Ukhti, and he's narrated so many stories of how, what justice is established, even the people that he called about these emirs in different cities. Would, he would even discipline them. Umar al-Khattab would, would have the people the right understanding of what zuhd, when people come walking like this, he would slap him. He says, it's not, it is not zuhd, it's not like that. It's not denouncing life or a citizenism. It's not like that. It is in the heart. Your actions and deeds. It is not that. He would set us straight. He would teach. He would, he would say that we learn 10 ayat at the same at, at, at time. Only 10 ayat. He was asked why. He says, when we learn 10 ayat, establish what is in it. Enjoin what is good, forbid it, what is evil. And what is command that we do, what is forbidden, we stay away from. So he says, We learned actions and deeds together. And knowledge and actions and deeds together. Umar al-Khattab, ya ahbab. Umar al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu wardah. So when he says, you are the gate. You are that gate, Umar. You are that gate, ya Umar. The one that held back the fitan. The one that established justice, the one that enjoyed good, forbid evil, the one that was when Prophet, when Prophet was asking about the the, the five, uh, the four Khalifa, what do you like? He says, <laughs> Establish, uh, enjoying good, forbid evil, saying the truth, and, and, and falsifying what is false. Yeah, this is Umar al Khattab. Allah Akbar. Now, people have the audacity to curse Umar. May Allah help us and help them and guide us and guide them, inshaAllah. So we say, Prophet Muhammad sallam said in his honor, Yes, إِذْنَ لَهُ Permit him to come in. وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ He will go to Jannah, inshaAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the declaration and support 
that he will uh, be among the that the, the Allah uh, supported his point of view in the Quran. Prophet given that you're going to Jannah and look at the beauty of this. I will finish inshallah. There's so much to share because uh, time is running out. But how does this giant of a man, giant of a Sahabi, unfortunately, every soul has taste death, including Umar al Khattab. Ta'anahu Abu Lu'lu al Majusi, alayhi min Allahi ma yastahiq. A munafiq, a hypocrite. This is a mawla, uh, the head of hypocrisy. He came disguising on Salat al Fajr. Fajr. When he was praying Fajr leading, he came in, ta'anahu. He stabbed him. And he also stabbed 13 other of the Sahaba. Radiallahu so when he said that he's qatalani al kalb, he killed me, that dog. So he's talking now to uh, Abu Rahman al Awf, radiallahu anhu, arda. he says, pull them to complete the salah. Imagine his, his, he, he cares about, let's complete the salah, not to call 911, forget everything, save my life. He says, finish the prayer. So Abu Rahman al Awf, radiallahu anhu, arda, he did a short prayer, and then right away they gave him some drink, and then when he drank, it came through his stomach, so he knew that was the end. So he says, take me to, to home. And now they took him home, radiallahu anhu wa And Abu, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, his, his son, radiallahu anhu, he placed the head of his father, Umar Khattab, radiallahu anhu, on, uh, on his thigh. So he said, put my cheek on the ground. He says, isn't my, my uh, you know, my, my thigh on, on the ground the same? He says, may, may, may your mother lose you. Do what I say. He, I don't have time for this. Don't argue. Do what I say. And the, 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 the scholar says, محمول على التواضع. You know, we're, we're saying this is the humbleness of Umar. And he starts saying, I wish I was this stibna, this uh, this straw or this hay. May I, I wish that my mother did not, uh, you know, gave me birth. I wish I was nothing. I wish leave this dunya not known, not, not knowing anything, not held accountable. Subhanallah, ya akhi. The man came in, radiallahu anhu wa but Sahabi says, Ya Umar al Khattab, Abshir. Prophet Muhammad said that you were going to Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support you in this. And you look what you've done so much good for the Ummah. And all these futuhat and everything else they've done. He says, even then, he was not, he, he, he was not comforted. Umar al Khattab, radiallahu anhu wa he says, Wallahi, if I know that there's only one human being will be going to the hellfire. I would be afraid that it would be me. Every human being will go to Jannah except one. I would be afraid that one person would be me. And I, I, I would be afraid. He says, if I, if I know that everybody would be going to the hellfire and there's one who goes to heaven, I would be hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be that one. It's Umar al-Khattab So now he goes to say, he says, go to Aisha radiallahu anha wa rdaha, umm al-mu'mineen. He says, Ask her permission for me to be buried with my companions, meaning Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr Siddiq. So he says, Wallahi, I wanted this place to be mine. Because who else? I mean, this is her, her husband, that's her father. Is anybody befitting? Subhanallah. So he says, But I will I, I, I'll be selfless when it comes to Umar. Give, give it to him. Even then, he says, after I die, you go back and ask her and say, uh, Umar al-Khattab, ask for this and don't say, Amir al-Mu'mineen, falastu lakum bi Amir. I'm no longer your Amir. After I die. Do not tell her Amir al-Mu'mineen, otherwise it becomes what? Hujjab, it's a plea. You have to obey the Amir al-Mu'mineen. So go back and ask her. After I die, get her permission again to be buried next to Prophet Muhammad Sallam with, uh, next to Abu Bakr Sadiq If she wills it, if she agrees, then bury me next to them. If not, then take me to the Maqbarat al-Muslimin, go back to Maqbarat al-Muslimin. Even to the last day, the man came here and he told him these beautiful words. When he turned around, walked away, he saw his thobe, his garment, dragged it on the ground. He said, bring him back. <laughs> bring him back. Even when he was dying, he was enjoying good and forbidden evil. He says, yeah, gulam, yeah, bunay. Oh, my young man. He says, raise your, your thobe above the ground. He says, it's better for you and atqa li rabbik. Okay, to clean, to clean your thobe and be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even to the last minute, akhiyan, ukhti, we know about Umar al-Khattab, 
We know how Umar radiallahu anhu radha lived. So let us walk in the same path of Umar radiallahu anhu so we can meet him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with Umar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Umar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to, to walk in the footpath of Umar. Radiallahu anhu ajma'in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect us with Umar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the neighborhood and be neighbors to talk to Umar in Jannah, insha'Allah, on his sahaba ajma'in. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to speech and follow the best of it. Wa akhir da'awam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallam ali alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in. Jazakumullahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubulik.